The second week in Advent, we always meet up with John the Baptist. What an interesting character he was. We have John the Baptist, this miracle of birth, coming to a woman who is past her years of giving birth. And here, she, here he is, and he is born, and he goes out into the wilderness, is where most of us uh, really <laughs> catch up with him. He doesn't wear normal clothes. He wear, eats lotus and yucky stuff, and he's out there in the desert. I don't know about you, but I've, I've looked at pictures of the desert, and while it is absolutely beautiful, when the rain comes and the flowers bloom, the desert is a very harsh place. It is a place of big extremes, of heat, 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 and cold, cold, cold. It's a, a place where there's lots of lack. There's a place where there's lots of wind often and sand. And there's a place, I believe, where many of us do not see hope. I remember reading a long time ago a story that I can't remember the title of anymore, but it was about a man who was making his way across the desert and how difficult it was and how his camels started to get ill and he didn't know if he was going to make it and he didn't see anybody else out there. And he survived by being able to find just enough nourishment and liquid from those really tough plants out there. But I remember thinking, while the desert is a beautiful place, it is a harsh place to be. None of us, I would think, would choose to go to the desert. And yet we hear so many things in the scripture that happen in the desert, don't we? We have the people leaving Egypt and going out into the desert and finding there the presence of God through the rock and through the gifts that God sends. We have Jesus, after he is baptized, going out into the desert. This dry place where we feel that there will be no life, life comes. And that is the setting that we catch up with John this morning. He is out there, he is in the desert, and he is out there and he is proclaiming that the time is near. Prepare your hearts, O oh Lord, people. Prepare because God is coming. Prepare the way for the Lord, he calls. It was very interesting when I read this week that for most of us, if we heard somebody doing that, we would say, oh, that person's a little bit off their rocker. <laughs> we probably wouldn't listen to them. We'd probably say, okay, and move to the other side of the aisle. But in that time, when people would yell and say, prepare the way of the Lord, and they were dressed as he was, and he had the strength of his word as he did, people listened, and people gathered, and they followed him, and they worried that something was happening. Either they would go back to their homes and pretend that nothing was there, or they would follow, and they would listen. I think we have the same choice today. Are we preparing a place in our heart for the Lord? Or are we just going to go back to our lives as if nothing is happening? As if it doesn't matter? As if we are in control? Prepare the way for the Lord. Make your hearts ready. It means you have to open up your hearts. You have to listen to what God wants. In my family, my middle daughter wears glasses. And I'm forever looking over and saying, how on earth can you see? Because the glasses look like a snowstorm has hit. I think the only time those glasses are ever cleaned is when I take them and clean them. I don't know how she gets to see through this. <laughs> and when I clean them, she says, wow, I can really see. <laughs> yep. You know, I've been thinking about that, and I think that that is a great metaphor, a teaching moment for us in our lives. I think as life goes on, little things gather in our lives, little things gather on our souls, little things 
like we get grudges or we want to give forgiveness but we don't or we get into bad habits or we do things that we know really we shouldn't do as Christians but you know we sort of get comfortable with them and we get used to seeing out like this and it looks just normal to us because slowly by slowly the dirt has accumulated and we forget what it would be like to take those glasses off and to clean them up. We forget what it would be like for us to prepare our heart for the Lord, to ask for forgiveness, to take a look at ourselves, to get back into a good practice with God, to remember what it is like to be Christians. I think that's what Advent's about. Advent is an opportunity for each and every one of us to take the glasses off of our souls, to rinse them off, to give them a good, healthy cleaning, to prepare a way for the Lord. We do that by asking forgiveness. We do that by making right relationships that have gone and fallen apart. We do that by starting once again a daily practice of reading or prayer or just simply service. We do that by remembering that Jesus and God and the story of who we are as Christians needs to be at the very center of our lives and not just out here. Advent is a time for us to listen to that voice that is crying to us from the wilderness that is saying, prepare the way for the Lord Jesus is coming again. Get yourself out of all the places that you have lost your way. Make yourself right so that you can be prepared to enjoy and to fully embrace the gifts of God that are coming. The gifts of hope and peace and love and joy. For when we open our hearts when we make that room within our lives to listen to God, we truly are able to embrace those gifts. I was saying to someone this week that, <clears throat> that I feel discouraged this Advent, that this Advent, it seems to me as if We've had so many things go wrong in our world that I asked myself, is it going to be any different this year? Are we really going to get there? Are we really going to make room for Christ in our lives? And I think the answer is to listen to today's passage and to not get discouraged but instead to prepare ourselves. By preparing ourselves, we remind ourselves that there is hope in the world. Yes, there is a lot of pain, but there is hope, hope that cannot be contained. There is a peace that comes to us that only God can give us. There is a joy when we know God that can only come from being connected with the one who created us. And there is the love, the source of all love, which is God. That when we allow all the dirty stuff, all the negative stuff of the world to cloud our vision, we deny ourselves that love. So I'm asking each one of you, to pray, to pray for yourself, to ask for forgiveness or whatever it is that you need to do to make your glasses clean again. But I'm asking you also to pray for our world. Pray that humankind will listen to the word of the prophet from so long ago and prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare a way for our hearts to act with dignity and compassion and mercy and justice 
and love for each other. Let us be the instruments this year. Let us be the ones who stand in awe at the manger and welcome in the gifts. Let us prepare the way for the Lord as we walk through Advent. Amen. Amen.